Cry Precision is without a doubt one of the most popular tactical uniform manufacturers out there. Not only has the Army Custom and G3 uniform been used internationally, but many offshoots and repros and bad copies have been made. It seems the design standard for the tactical uniform cannot be beat. However, there are a number of manufacturers that decided to stray away from the typical cry-cut uniform and create something truly special. One of these manufacturers is Arcteryx. This is the gear locker. Let's take a look at the Arcteryx Talos set. Lovingly known as Deadbird, Arcteryx is one of the manufacturers who created a very nice combat set that was used by many units, including the KSK. Not only is it still in the standard Cry Precision Multicam, but it is feature packed, so let's take a look at those today. The combat shirt doesn't necessarily stray away from the classic, typical combat shirt designs. We have a very stretchy fabric that is moisture wicking and very breathable as our base of the torso. The top half of the uniform though, including the arms and shoulder area, is not only a lot more durable with this ripstop nylon material, but it also matches the multicam torso. Right up front, you'll notice a whole bunch of different zippers. Starting with the collar, you have an opening zipper that will reveal your tag and label. To note, there are a couple different versions of this, this one being the collared version, although there is sort of a sports jersey version that you can find as well. As we continue on to the arms, you'll see a few different features, including a 4x4 Velcro square for any sorts of patches, as well as arm pockets. On the inside of the sleeve, you'll see a couple of different neat features. The arm strap here is so that we can roll up the sleeve and tuck it in to be able to maintain a rolled short sleeve look. However, my favorite feature of the underside of the arms is this nearly full length pit zip. If you are familiar with Arcteryx jacket design, you'll know quite a few of them have these pit zips for breathability, and the Talos combat set incorporates this feature well. As we work our way down to the sleeve, we see nothing special here aside from a button opening. There are a couple of them, and there's not any Velcro, which I appreciate for that stealthiness. The buttons seem relatively strong after all these years of use, and they will allow the user to roll them up and tuck it in relatively seamlessly. And of course, this is identically copied on the other side. The back of this combat shirt is no different. It still retains that nice ripstop nylon material up top, but it also has a small Velcro spot on the back of the collar. If you look closely, you can see I do have some small holes in the stretchy material. This is an unfortunate side effect of this being a very well-loved shirt. However, they are nothing that's too noticeable once you have a plate carrier on. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at the pants. The Arcteryx Talos Combat Pants do boast some very nice features that are similar to those seen on the combat shirt. Up top, you'll see a dual button closure with a zippered fly. Open these up and you'll reveal the tags similar to the combat shirt. We do have enlarged belt loops, five of them to be precise, with an especially large one on the very rear. We also see three small elastic bands, which can be used for suspenders. The pockets have a deep cut and are relatively deep, fitting about my average size hand. The thigh pockets I found to be particularly interesting. The closure is kind of sewn into the pants here with a small Velcro closing tab. They are very spacious, although definitely not as big as some of the comparable ones on the market. And as we work our way down, we'll see some small calf pockets with similar closures. These are present on both sides of the pants. You'll also find two small additional pockets on the rear sides of the pants with two seat pockets. These are almost as large as the thigh pockets and very close together. So I likely wouldn't be packing these with uh, much at all. However, one of the best features of these pants is the knee pad reinforcement. These are made to fit with the Arcteryx kneecaps that have straps that go externally, although there is a pocket internally to fit them. They have additional reinforcement here on the knees, which is greatly appreciated because these have not blown out yet, even though they've been used quite a bit. And if you are curious on how you would insert those knee pads, you can pull the pants inside out and you'll see the pocket here that can close and retain the knee pad. At the very bottom of the pants, we see a sort of dual layer system, though it is very thin, where the wearer can put one of these inside his boot and one kind of on the outside, 
with some bungee to close it up. And if you've been following my channel, you know that this design inspired another very, very cool pair of pants. So let's take a look side by side at these and maybe see what kind of features Arcteryx inspired in the Linderhof Tactic combat pants. Of course, there are a good number of design differences. The pocket cutouts are nearly identical, and the small loops for suspenders are seen in the same locations. While Linderhof did incorporate some more pockets, the knee pad pocket is almost exactly the same, albeit this reinforcement here is pretty proprietary and uh, a cool look if you ask me. It does still incorporate the Arcteryx kneecaps with the external strap design. Similarly, the bottom cuff of the pants is an almost identical design with the bungee strap and small slit to wear inside the boot. For my KSK reenactors out there, you know that Flectarn is the pattern of choice for the KSK, at least up until Multitarn was introduced. However, on deployment, multi-cam was very commonly used. And not only do we have a lot of pictorial evidence, but a lot of spoken evidence from KSK operators themselves highlighting how much they loved the Arcteryx sets. They can be seen as early as the 2010 to 2013 era, though they really grew in popularity around 2014, with the Talos set being almost exclusively the Arcteryx set used. So if you're looking to spice up your KSK kit with some fresh multi-cam against that Flectar and Steingrau Olive, get an Arcteryx Talos set. They're not only really comfortable, but they fit the bill and look pretty damn good. And so, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of the Arcteryx Talos combat set in multi-cam. Thank you guys for checking out this video. This is the Gear Locker, and we'll see you in the next one.